All right, today we're bringing you the parable of the silver mirror. And uh, this is something that uh, sh shouldn't be done at home, uh, but it is a gospel parable uh, in several parts that includes some chemistry. Um, the purpose of this demonstration is to show and illustrate um, how the doctrine and gospel of Jesus Christ actually purifies you and makes you more valuable. So in this particular example, what we have are two uh, starting materials. What we have here is the Erlenmeyer flask, which represents the body into which you're born. And then here in vial, in the first vial, is some silver ore. In this particular silver ore represents the soul that you have and with which you were born and with which you come to earth. And what we've done already is this silver ore has been uh, liquefied through the baptism of water uh, and fire in order to make it pure, or in order to make it soluble. And so that's what we have in this particular example. Now the first thing that we learn uh, once we start to come to Christ is that initially God will, will bring into our lives things that make it very easy to conquer temptation. There's a lot of sweetness of the gospel and things seem to be to be pretty clear. Now, they're not very valuable. We haven't gotten the good things out of our lives yet, but we're now in a state where God can act. And then trials and difficulties emerge, temptations occur, and we find very quickly that um, we're no longer as pure and clear as we wanted to be. Now, the purpose of trials and tribulations is to prepare us in order to come to Christ. We read in the scripture that God gives us weaknesses that we may come unto him, and that if we come unto him, he will make our weaknesses into strengths. So after a certain amount of, of time, our trials are sufficient to where uh, we have proven that we are willing to work to overcome them, but we still need to be purified, because this is not something that you can do by yourself. Now, why silver? Historically, silver has, was chosen because silver was a metallic substance that was readily available to most people and was available to most countries in terms of currency. Secondly, uh, silver, in terms of its metallic form, is the gives the best reflection of what is shown upon it. And so silver, in this particular example, also because it's safe to do without killing myself, is because of its reflective properties of the light that shines in, in on it. In fact, I should have just done this. Well, I should have scripted this better. But this is this is what you get when it's live and not scripted. So we've had our trials now, and we fought against them, but we still are not purified, and we still are not ready. Once we start, once we've come to Christ, and we start trying to live, then we find that we learn to live the commandments and try to do what we refer to and the faith as the basics of the gospel. And these are things like praying daily, reading the scriptures, going to church, trying to live a good life. And we find that in doing these, that our life does not actually turn out the way we thought. Now, most Christians think that once they come to Christ and they are baptized, that they've accumulated quite a favorable balance in their favor uh, with respect to the Lord. But we find that in trying to do so, enough and then, uh, trying to come to the Lord that uh, we continue to fall short and so it's this is not what most Christians expect but we find that we become even dirtier than we ever were before this is not because we are dirtier it is because that we become a, more aware of how far we have to come and how much greater we need a Savior when we start trying to come to him until you realize there is a savior, until you realize there is a standard, it's easier to think better of yourself than once you realize that we are all, um, that ev everyone has sins and comes short of the glory of God. <coughs> Excuse me. So we start trying to live the gospel, we recognize that we are dirtier, and our lives become more difficult. And this is because, not because we've done anything wrong, but because the devil intervenes and intercedes in our life and tries to create uh, drama and trials uh, to get us to go off the path. Because doing these things, even though they are basic things, is very difficult to do on a long-term basis. Got one.
moving the gospel takes effort. We continue to fall, and we recognize that uh, we have even further to go than we first thought. Okay? So, this is the second substance that we added. This is a base. It represents the basics. The basic principles, the basic principles and ordinances of the gospel of trying to live a Christian life. And a lot of people stop here and give up because this isn't what they expected out of life and it isn't what they um, were counting on. It isn't what they thought God promised. And so they conclude of necessity that they must be wrong. It's because they haven't stayed long enough to enjoy the sweet things, the fruits of the gospel. So the third substance, this is a sugar. This represents the sweet fruits of the gospel, the things that come from a dedicated life, from being disciplined like a disciple to living those things that God has asked and from dedicating our lives to Christ. What does it mean to dedicate our lives to Christ? This means to let him take over. Now, there are a lot of Christians, even in my faith, even people that I know really well, who think nonsensically that they must first purify themselves before they come to Christ. And no matter what you do to this, no matter how much you agitate it, it is not in a state where it can become pure, and there is no valuable recovery at this point from the ore that was originally dissolved. We just have a blackened soul inside of a clear body. And the if the body, when the body goes away, the soul is what remains, and it hasn't been purified until we let Christ in and taste of the fruits and let him take control of our lives. We will not get any of the valuables out of our soul, and we will not become purified even as he is pure. So we take this opportunity to add the sweet uh, fruits of the gospel to our lives. I'm doing two of these at a time because it's easier to do two than it is to do one. I hope I didn't mess this up. And then we let, uh, we put ourselves in the hand of God. And it is not we who do this, but it is because of him, as he shakes up our life and turns us into what he wants us to become, where we begin to be purified as he is pure. Now, at this point, you will still face trials, and the trials will become maybe even more difficult than they were before. In fact, some of God's favorite children have gone through deeper, longer, and tougher trials than anyone else. But the purpose of this is to bring out the, valuable, the valuables in us so that we can reflect Christ in our lives. There's a couple of scriptures related to this. Have you received his image in your countenance? Does your life reflect the Savior? Have you become purified even as he is pure in his hand? These are his hands. These are not yours. This is your body now reflecting the love of the Savior and that in his hands, the valuables, the worth of your soul has been made manifest. And when others look at you, they can see the Savior reflected back on themselves. Not quite finished yet, but I mean, you can see from here that this is uh, sil now silver plated on the inside, and this is pure silver on the inside, where the silver has been removed from the ore because we allowed ourselves first to be baptized in fire and water, but that just gets it started. It just makes us available to change. We start living the gospel, doing the basics. These are literal and figuratively speaking, where the basics of, of the gospel actually bring us to a place where we can be changed. We're still not ready yet, and a lot of people quit there because they do not stay long enough to, to taste of the sweet fruits of the gospel, and they do not let Christ, see for Christ, do not let Christ bring those things into their lives. They do not do them long enough for him to come along and purify their lives. And then they try and do it themselves. Now, we could let, have let this stuff sit forever and nothing would have happened. It is only in the hand of the Savior that we become purified. Okay? So that when God looks upon us, he no longer sees the parts of us that remain. All he can see is what we have become in the hand of the Master.